This last video on fasteners talks about some other specialty fasteners that everybody should know and a few additional ones that I threw in here at the end. So let's talk about some of these. These are some bolts that you will always see. Some of them have wood threads, some of them have machine threads. A machine thread is a thread that allows you to put on a nut. Okay, so this would be a screw with a machine thread. It's a very consistent thread that allows a nut to go on it. All right? That's the machine thread. A wood thread is something that comes to a point that um, you put into the wood and the threads dig into the wood and cut their own threads into the wood. So it grabs the wood. All right? Like a wood screw would. Standard wood screw would have a wood thread. It does not take a nut. Okay, so that's kind of some characteristics about this. And they have different style of heads and they're used for different purposes. So if you're looking at the handout that we have um, that goes along with this fastener lesson, we have pictures of all the different bolts on here, so you should be following along. The first one is called a stove bolt. A stove bolt looks like a round head wood screw. It has that round head with a slot on it, usually a straight slot, but it can be Phillips and other things. Um, but it's a machine thread, it's not a wood thread, and it's designed to have a nut on it. So the nut will go on here. This is called a stove bolt. All right. If it's going into metal, you would just put the nut on the bolt and that would be it. But when you're putting things in wood, one thing you need to remember is that wood is soft. So if I was to put this stove bolt through here, I would probably want to put a washer underneath the head of it. And then before I put the nut on, put a washer on top. And the purpose of the washer is to prevent the nut or the head of this bolt from sinking into the wood. When I go to tighten this down with a wrench, this nut could just dig right into the wood and sink in and never really get all the way tight. But because of the washer, it gives it a broad, hard base to tighten up against and not allow the, um, the, the nut to sink down into the wood. So whenever you do put a nut up against the wood, you do wanna have a washer there. And if the head is not very large, um, a washer on the other side is often um, a good idea as well. So this is a stove bolt. Okay, here's a, and another example of one. They come in different lengths. Here's again, another stove bolt, right? Wood thread, I mean a machine thread, so it can accept a nut with a rounded head. The next one on the handout is a hex bolt. Now here's a giant one. It's got a hexagonal head. It's kind of like a stove bolt with a hexagon <coughs> hexagonal head. They come in different sizes. Here's a smaller one, okay? different diameters and lengths, the diameters and inches, the, <coughs> as well as the, uh, the length is. <coughs> Excuse me. All right? These are hex bolts, okay? Again, machine thread, they, they're designed to take a nut. This, these threads are not designed to, to drill into the wood. They're too fine, okay? And the, they come in different um, grades of the thread, threads per inch, but we're not gonna get into that. Just basically, I want you to know the type of bolt. So these are called hex bolts. The next one is a carriage bolt. This also would take a nut. Now the difference on this is the head. <clears throat> and it's not a hexagonal head, but it's a, this domed head. It doesn't even have a slot for a screwdriver or anything in it. So what keeps it from spinning when you tighten it? Well, if you look on the bottom side of it, there is this square kind of a um, portion to it that will actually dig into the wood and hold the bolt steady so as you tighten it, it will not spin. Um, there was a Concord Coach is a company up in Concord, New Hampshire that um, originally developed these when they were making stage coaches because that kind of a head is a lot more decorative than a hexagonal head bolt that you'd put a wrench on and that doesn't look as nice. So they came up with these bolts that will sink down into the wood and all you see is this shiny dome and that's the head of the bolt but it won't spin as you tighten the nut on the other side because of that, that square portion underneath. You see this a lot on um, toys and other things that are assembled, uh, gas grills and everything else you'd assemble. If they have a square hole at, the, at one end, that's for this square portion of the bolt to fit into so that when you tighten the nut, the bolt doesn't spin. So it's not just used in woodworking. Um, if you're building a deck, this is a nice way to bolt the, the, uh, the deck components together, the frame of the deck. Um, a bolt going through with a washer and nut on the other side is probably the strongest connection you can make to fasten two things together. 
Um, and again, this doesn't look so bad when you see it from the outside. So you just put all the nuts on the inside. So that is called a carriage bolt. So we have a stove bolt, a hex bolt, and a carriage bolt. Now, another one that looks like a hex bolt, but has a wood thread on it, you get this far enough away so you can see the whole thing, is a lag bolt. Now, this again, this is a giant one. Here's a smaller one. Okay, it's a lag bolt. A lag bolt has a hexagonal head, but it has a wood thread, not a thread that would receive a nut, like these other ones we were talking about. So it's a basically a giant wood screw, but instead of a you know screwdriver slot at the top, you have a hexagonal head that can take a wrench or a socket. So these are called lag screws. These dig into the wood, they do not take a nut. Now here's one. This one looks like it had an identity crisis. This one has got a wood thread on one end and a machine thread on the other. This is called a hanger bolt. What the heck would you use a hanger bolt for? There's not even a place to put a screwdriver or a wrench or anything on this thing. Hmm, interesting. Well, the place you will find this, you probably have at least four of them in your house. And if you crawl underneath your dining room table and look up, you will probably see at least four of them, maybe even eight. And where you find them is on the top of a table leg. So here's a table leg, and here is a hanger bolt. What it's used for is you screw the, th the wood thread part into the top of the leg, and you leave it there forever. You never take it out again. Wood, one thing about putting screws into wood, you take them in and out three or four times, and eventually they strip out. So with a table, especially large things like a table, you want to be able to disassemble it if you're going to move or something like that. And to take the legs off, you'd have to unbolt it. Well, if that was a wood thread and you had to keep taking the bolt in and out, eventually it would strip out and the legs wouldn't stay put anymore. So what you do is you put in a hanger bolt, and the hanger bolt usually fits through a plate that's in the bottom of the table like this that hooks onto the other components of the table and you put a nut on there, and that nut holds the leg in place. Then when you want to take the legs off to move to go to your new house, you take the bolt off, the leg comes out of the table, you put it in the truck nice and flat, doesn't take up much space. When you get to where you're going, you flip it upside down, throw the legs back on, put the nut back on, and you're back in business. The nice thing is you could do this hundreds or thousands of times and not wear anything out because this is a metal shaft with a machine thread with, that has a nut on it. So taking that nut on and off a hundred times isn't going to wear anything out because you're leaving this in place. So that's typically where you see a hanger bolt. They come in all different shapes and sizes. Here again is a little one, right? Wood thread, machine thread. And it's usually used on table legs. That's usually where you see it. And it's called a hanger bolt. It's kind of a funny name, hanger bolt, but that's what it's called. And you should know what that is. That's going to be on our little test. Now that gives you a, a permanent machine thread on something. Well, what if I wanted a permanent metal internal thread? This is an external thread. What if I want an internal thread in something? Well, the next thing is called a threaded insert. And this is a threaded insert. It's got a wood thread on the outside and a machine thread on the inside. And what I would do is I would drill a hole into a piece of wood. I'm not going to put this all the way in because I don't have the tool to put it in with, but I would screw this down inside of there and this would screw all the way down till it's flush and I would leave this in the wood forever and then when I wanted to bolt something in I now have an internal thread made of metal this one happens to be brass that I can take apart and put together a hundred times I made some beds for my boys once years ago and the way we disassemble it it's held together with these threaded inserts that hold the side rails on and every time we move the beds or take them apart um, move them someplace else we can take these bolts out and put them back in and it doesn't wear, oops, doesn't wear anything out. But it's a nice way to have an internal thread in something. Okay, so again, you have an internal thread, but this, this is screwed all the way in. I don't have the strength to do it with my hand, but um, they, they make a tool that does this. And they show it a screwdriver slot, but I've never successfully put it in when using that. But um, if you took a, a hex bolt like this and put a nut on it, you can even use that. You tighten it down till the nut hits and then turn the whole thing with a wrench and it drives that in there and then just back, it, back off the nut and then unscrew this and you're in business. But the nice thing about this is it doesn't show from the other side. You can drill all the way through if you want to, but you don't have to. Um, so this is nice when you have a situation where you, the other side is visible and you don't want to see 
the fastener. So this is a good place for that operation. Another way to make an internal thread is with one of these. This is called a T-nut. I don't know why they call it a T-nut. I don't know where the T comes from. But it's a, it looks like a washer with a threaded tube and some spikes on it. And the way it works is you drill a hole and you put this in there and you pound the spikes in so that this stays there. We've already done it to this one. You can see here's the threaded inserts already pounded in there. And that holds it in place. And now from the other side, I can put in a screw from the other side. And I've got a, a very secure fastening through that piece. The downside to a T-nut is that the back side looks pretty nasty. So you, you can only use this in a place where this other side is not visible. Okay, but it's actually stronger than the threaded insert because this there's no way you're going to pull this through. On a threaded insert, if you pull on that hard enough, that could tear out conceivably. But um, it would take an awful lot to tear this right through the, the, the wood. So these are very, very strong. Again, the downside is that the other side has to be an area that you don't see. If you've ever seen a climbing wall in a climbing gym, very often that's how they made the climbing wall. They take a piece of plywood, drill a million holes in, you know, all over it, and pound in T-nuts on the back side. And then on the front side, they can screw in their different hand holes that they put in all over the place. And that's a common use for these things among many, many, many others. But that's, that's some of these other fasteners that you should know. So these are the things that I want you to know if you're in my class and taking my test. Again, we'll quickly review here. We have a stove bolt that has a machine thread, rounded head, and you can put a nut on the back. A hex bolt, machine thread with a hex head. A carriage bolt, machine thread, but with that domed head with the little square nub on the bottom for um, a nice finished look, right? Carriage bolt. And then we have the lag bolt, which has a hex head, a lot like the uh, hex bolt did, but it's got a wood screw on the wood screw type thread, not designed to take a nut, all right? A lag bolt screws directly into the wood, cuts its own threads. The hanger bolt looks like this. This is the one that was used on the table leg. Hanger bolt. And then you have the two ways to make an internal thread. One was the threaded insert and the other was the T-nut. The one that looks like a washer with spikes and a threaded tube. So those are the different types of fasteners that I want you to know. You should be able to identify them. If you went to the hardware aisle in Home Depot, you should be able to identify every one of those kinds of things. These are common fasteners you see all the time. Now I'd like to add a few other things here. These will not be on the test, but there's all kinds of specialty fasteners out there, like I had mentioned earlier in the other video. Um, some other ones that you see the, that are used a lot in construction are these um, different kinds of engineered fasteners that are designed to force themselves into the wood. They have, um, these are called flat locks. They have a flat head that will sink into the wood a little bit. They've got a, a tip on them that's self-drilling, a little bit different than the one I just showed you, but this will force itself into the wood. No need to drill any holes. Right, and they come in a, 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 an assortment of lengths. These are three and a half inches long. Um, here's some truss lock ones. The box on this says, engineered wood fasteners. All right, approved for um, single-sided installation into LVLs, which are engineered beams. All right, and these are, um, they usually come with a driving head that you can put into your impact driver, because that's the way you put them in. So here's the, the head on these is, um, like a hex head and it has this thing that would fit into your impact driver and drive these things in, right? Um, these ledger locks, very similar. Um, again, slightly different design. On the cover of this box, it shows you all the different ones that this particular company, this is called uh, Fasten Master, and they make all these different engineered um, style bolts. And they're ledger lock, timber lock, truss lock, headlock, they all have their own purpose. Um, I'm sure if you went to their website or something, they could tell you what each of these is for. But again, there's all kinds of specialty fasteners out there 
Um, and we can probably go on for hours talking about different kinds of fasteners. There's different kinds of fasteners for drywall and other things. We have different kinds of fasteners that are used for um, disassembly where you drill a hole in from one side. That's what this is. Um, Knockdown furniture uses this kind of a thing. And then you, this, this round tube is threaded. This goes into the wood from one, one direction. The bolt goes in from the other and you can pull two pieces together at the same time. The head is a little bit decorative, so it's, it's okay to have it showing. Um, here's another crazy kind of a fastener used for um, countertops, drawing two countertops together from underneath. Um, so there's, like I said, thousands and thousands of different kinds of specialty fasteners, but I just thought I'd enlighten you on a few of the ones that we have here. So hopefully you've learned a little bit. And my students, you should be taking a look at that handout. There's quite a bit here on nails, screws, and these specialty um, fasteners, other bolts and stuff that I do want you to know. Hope you enjoyed this video.